Uh, now uh, it is a time for some question answers. So uh, any of you can please unmute yourself one by one and then can uh, ask questions. Are we aware that in lines of you know what has been done in Australia, New Zealand, uh, has the government of India, MORTH, has any plans to launch such kind of a comprehensive program to reduce the accidents over a period of year? Of course, I read you know they have targets of like uh, reducing by 50% by two, 2024. But is any action plan under preparation or has been prepared? No, there is nothing. Practically, there is no action plan at the moment. As I said right at the beginning, most countries had to concentrate on this pandemic during 2020 and 21. Even before that, they didn't have any structured uh, action plan. Now, action plan, something prepared by ministry or me or anyone else and keeping it somewhere in a file that this is our action plan, it doesn't help. It has to be prepared collectively by all stakeholders. As I showed, 10 to 12 organizations are involved in road safety directly, indirectly. All of them must be involved in preparation of the action plan and execution of the action plan so that we can focus on the results that we are looking for and ultimately we'll achieve that. And that's what is required. Action plan at the moment is not there. What Honorable Minister is saying is trying to say something ad hoc that by 2025 we'll do that. But how he will do, he doesn't say so. He, he, he probably doesn't know even. All some people have, have given him some hope or good talks or kind of uh, understanding. And based on that, he is talking about that. But actually, there is no structured action plan which uh, shows the targets by when, what will be achieved. All these countries, as I showed you, example of Australia, they had a plan of doing things. And among all the plans, there is a black spot rectification plan. But in our, we don't have the total plan. We have only black spot rectification. Today, in India, the government's top priority is rectification of black spot. So I have a question here. The, uh, the, yeah. uh, this is Nandish from Abu Dhabi. The, yeah. the second decade of action talks of reduction by 50% in 10 years. Don't you see yeah. that the five years target set by India is just a little over ambitious or it is just, uh, it is just uh, another statement made just to you know, douse the angst of what's happening on the ground? Exactly, you said it last sentence. In the last sentence, you said it exactly what I would have said. The only thing is that, uh, no doubt, I mean, if, if, we, if, if we cannot do a 50% of fatality and serious injury reduction by 2025, at least 20%, 25% we can easily do. Certain things are doable. But only thing is that a coordination is required for all these 10, 12 organizations and they should work for the common goal. And then it's, it is not impossible. Tamil Nadu has reduced the road crashes as well as the uh, fatalities uh, by about 15, 20% in practical sense. They show it something like 24, 25%, but effectively this. But their effort is, is also not kind of very structured. I mean, still it is having a lot of deficiencies. They can also could achieve uh, much higher uh, reduction. But that's that's a kind of uh, sign uh, which we have in front of our, our uh, eyes that something little coordinated can do an, I mean, important contribution. And that's what we must follow for the country as a whole with a structured action plan involving everyone. Everyone must work together. Safe system approach is required. Five pillars are required. Sixth pillar is speed management. With these six pillars only, we can achieve the target reduction. 
minister has said something. Obviously, minister's job is that. I mean, we can't blame him. He has to keep everybody with humor, and that's what he does. But uh, well, I mean, I don't want to go beyond that with minister's comment. Sir, uh, this is Kumar Abhinav. Sir, uh, as yeah, you please. told uh, that there are three kind of facilities. Like uh, in four wheeler, uh, four wheeler vehicles, we have like five star safety ratings and also. And uh, when it comes to CMVR, sir, we have taping requirements, particular type of taping requirements. And yeah. same was the case in the under run protection. So yeah. all these things, is there any kind of rule by the government uh, to the manufacturers that these things should be made mandatory? Why the government is allowing uh, two star rated vehicles on the road? Is there no, any kind of is... law binding or anything? The government doesn't have a control or ruling that every vehicle has to be five star. But government has ruled that all new vehicles, because you see the uh, in use vehicles, the vehicles which are already in use on the road network, they cannot say that uh, you have to have uh, everything uh, uh, equipped with front underrun protection, rear underrun protection, and side underrun protection. But for new vehicles, it is already law. It is already law that every vehicle, commercial vehicle, will come with FUPD, RUPD, and SUPD. So those are coming. But existing ones, ones on the road, which are uh, already operating on the road, they have to be uh, retrofitted with such uh, devices. And that is what is the biggest problem, and government is not putting any law or pressure to this. They they think over time everything will become FUPD, RUPD equipped. But that's not the point. I mean, vehicles are used for very long in our country. Cars used for 15 years. And many people try to take permission and use for next five years as well. So that's what keeps on. If, if the vehicle is in good condition, in earlier years, a vehicle uh, procured at some point in time, it was considered to be a lifelong property. Whereas in Japan, it is three years. Beyond that, you cannot use it. Its pollution level and other things are not acceptable, and you have to scrap it. That, that's the policy, and our government doesn't have such policy yet. Any other question? Uh, I just want to share if you have time now, uh, like uh, as you said, the multiple agencies are involved in uh, this particular act, but not in an organized manner. You know, in a city also, it is a given a due consideration at times and a city like Chandigarh, of course, is much more organized than many of them. So uh, many of the students, you know, which were doing the thesis for black sport studies, uh, we could see that they only agency where there is any kind of data is the police station, nearest police station, which has the data, accident data. And uh, such kind of data is neither maintained by any hospital. They, they are not keeping it separate. Neither the uh, road manufacturing, you know, the road bodies like PWDs or city uh, municipal corporations, they are also not keeping any kind of this data actively. So obviously, a couple of days you now on a Twitter, you know, there was a tweet, so I responded to them that in case you are running a road safety program, we like to, as a technical institution to be associated. Twice I said that no response was, uh, you know, given by them. So probably they are also only interested to know, show that we have organized a kind of awareness camps and then they consider that the job is over. So obviously I sincerely believe that, you know, this much more need uh, for that coordination effort to take place and also sensitize the concerned uh, departments that they need to take active instances of that. In Haryana, I know they have already started the kind of exercise that they have identified the black spots some, and they are asking their respective uh, departments uh, to take up measures for that. Yeah, that's right. I mean, practically, in terms of uh, crash data, accident data, what you have talked about, I mean, as I said, 
this is collected by police globally i mean every country it is the responsibility of police because they are the first people first responder to the accident scene so therefore they are the correct people to collect no doubt but question is they have to be equipped they have to be trained to collect the proper data at the moment there is no training nothing i mean uh, police collects it as a fir first information report uh, and it is a crime record as a crime record if you record only a minimum few things which is uh, i mean suitable to you that's not enough for me i need to know how do i take care of that particular location that no second accident takes place at that particular location for the same reason so this is what is my objective of the data and his objective is to uh, i mean uh, i mean there has to be compensation to the victims uh, in some way or the other making somebody responsible so therefore they always blame the bigger vehicle and the road user uh, is is to be blamed not the infrastructure not the traffic control not any of the other things nothing is considered so that's how the data is collected now data collection as i showed you it has to be in a digital format it should be shareable across the board and uh, tamil nadu uh, had developed an, a, a particular system and that was uh, mentioned everywhere saying that tamil nadu model tamil nadu model of data collection but there also serious lacuna is there error then uh, incomplete data and what not because that data is collected by four departments now four departments cannot have same time available at the when the accident has occurred these are all random ev events so therefore they are not available collectively together at the time of the accident to collect the data somebody collects it after two days so therefore much of the important information is lost already so that way data cannot be collected it has to be collected in a very interesting way the way i showed you the road accident data recorder so that way yeah, i mean i only touched upon only the uh, two slides i have shown but uh, actually a proper presentation of that shows how interesting it is uh, to collect the data the other point which you raised is the black spot now naturally the black spot investigation and rectification is a scientific method at the moment the way it is being done it's all i would say partially ad hoc no doubt the, on the curb of uh, scientific analysis or scientific approach uh, much of it is ad hoc uh, there is a irc code irc 131 2021 is under publication at the moment it was finalized last year and till now it is not out it will be out after the annual session probably it is under print now that must be followed that shows exactly the way the black spot should be identified as well as how it should be rectified now i see uh, dr gitam tiwari will be uh, making a presentation on these um, black spot rectification accident crash data analysis and black spots related uh, topic in this program what i received from amit a couple of days back so she will be covering that particular uh, code or document of irc uh, i i generally cover that in extensive detail uh, when i talk on that topic to other uh, institutions so the similar course so th that's what is to be followed actually but at the moment uh what is being done across the whole country in respect of this unless that codel procedure is followed this will not succeed uh, the way it is required to succeed the black spot program has to be rigorous and black spot is once for all it's not that uh, i mean at the moment our country thinks that black spot will have a short term measures a medium term measures and long term measures what do you mean once you know this is a black spot it's a killer spot it has to be rectified there is nothing called short term medium term long term 
it has to be corrected and it is to be corrected as simple as that so that's how it should be thought but our at the moment thinking or the ideas which are being pursued till this document comes out uh, is is partially right partially wrong so can i say something here rajesh here uh, yes please question just one question uh, okay fine just Sorry, now you said is uh, just now what you said is rightly that if you have accident police investigate the reasons uh, don't investigate what is the reason for the accident i believe so if you have a the government uh, not to hurt anybody but the government engineers who have a government engineers who have a authority do not uh, possess a respons equal responsibility also if you have a pothole on the road or damage of the road sinking of the road and uh, if some uh, we have some accidents so these uh, uh, government engineers never get a responsibility they they should also be asked the questions you have accident for this reason and why this not this was not taken care of my experience in my 25 years i never heard any engineer was questioned by authority dear engineer this accident is because of you and please answer why it has happened number 1 number 2 and this is a right for maybe you can touch somewhere that uh, uh, engineer should also should be responsible for uh, for um, accidents on the road for uh, justifying their reasons yes uh, i mean what you said is uh, just included in the motor vehicle amendment act 2019 this point what you said that road authority or engineers involved in the design they must be made responsible for defects in the roads which contributes to the accidents as the reason for the accident now this is already has come into the law but these are not operative yet i mean uh, nobody has gone into that level uh, to understand it in that manner it has to be uh, that act is to be made into rules and that must be enacted uh publicized and used in the crash data collection as well and when that will happen then only things will change until that time at the moment it is in the approved motor vehicle amendment act it is there that's all it's nothing beyond that this is already it has been understood by people no doubt and they have recorded in the data that so many deaths have occurred due to potholes this is one new thing has come since last couple of years okay good sir i just want to share so, one thing if uh, yeah. when is uh, everybody's responsibility is nobody's responsibility yes yeah? that's right so no, so no, with no, so no, many no, agencies it is like this people no no it is like we have i have authority but no responsibility so it is yes not, yes exactly like see this. the uh, there is a, i i don't think there is a clearly defined lead agency who is responsible to ensure that the killed and seriously injured are are properly tracked and monitored and there's a sustained effort of of reducing this year on year you know and uh, and and yes i'm i'm sure we are in the right direction there is a, there is a vision there is a mission but uh, i st uh, i still feel there's lots of efforts uh, needed yeah, yes, road no. safety yes. yeah road safety cannot be an afterthought you can't expect uh, uh, road safety not to be done during during planning designing construction working and expect a road to be safe it's a philosophy yeah all of them have to be done correctly and you need to learn from the best countries just out of experience uh, uh, we visit every fatal site every month wherever there is a crash and somebody has lost a life we get the reports we get the collision diagrams we have to go to the site even if it's after it's two weeks three weeks a month we have to go and see what are the engineering measures that could have been done to fix the issue and 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 learn lessons from it yeah and i i'm sure that is needed in our indian context as well yeah indian uh, we, context in indian context in many of the states this procedure exists and particularly tamil nadu i know it exists uh it has been included in last 3 4 5 years uh after any fatal accident uh, three members uh, top three members the uh, chief of road chief of police chief of uh, another agency they have to visit the site and understand what could have been the proper reason for the accident and this life has been lost so this already exists but this is not common 
and uniform everywhere. That's what is the situation at the moment. Yes, sir. Sir, um, I have one serious question. Yeah. So, uh, um, myself, I mean, okay. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir, my question is why not each and every vehicle should be first tested in global NCAP uh, before selling in the road? Like, uh, if there there is two star car, three star car, it should be banned already. Like, uh, it should not go in the road if it's not four star or five star. Why is uh, getting selling in uh, India and not each and every car is not uh, going to global end cap for testing? And without uh, zero airbags, also the car is uh, getting uh, to sell sales. You see, if if it has to be four star, five star. Uh, these vehicles have to be a kind of equipped with many things. You need airbags to all seats, then seat belts to all seats, uh, front, rear, everywhere. And similarly, any other of uh, ABS is required in it, uh, electronic stability control required, a whole lot of other things. Uh, the, the kind of proximity sensors, uh, that means if you are close to another uh, vehicle, it should give you a uh, whole lot of things. I mean, it's it only, only in the high-end cars today uh, sold in India have these features. And not every car. Uh, Maruti Alto doesn't pass in any star. So like that, it is no star, zero star. Uh, or um, earlier Maruti 800, it was like a tin box and traveling at 60 with five people sitting in it uh, on a highway. Uh, obviously, uh, any any kind of slightest uh, distortion or kind of uh, out of control will kill all these six people. So all that is the situation. But question is, uh, reason, argument given, uh, to all that once they try to put all these safety devices in, these are called in vehicle safety devices. If all these in vehicle safety devices are provided in the vehicle, even the ABS, even before putting ABS compulsory, there was a human cry, the vehicle price will go up, nobody will buy and automobile association was uh, fighting with the government. But anyway, Subsequently, they agreed and did that because world has gone into that, so they simply cannot be left behind. And that's why only a very few cars or uh, one, one or two cars only can go for export. Uh, and export models are equipped with all these things because they are sold in other countries. Our, our vehicle manufacturing, they, they have quite a good export, but all that's not a huge one, of course, but still, all the vehicles produced for export, they have to have all those features. Then only in those countries that will be accepted or permitted to be sold. And that's what happens. But within the country, uh, those vehicles are not available because uh, they uh, think that these will not be purchased because of the cost. Uh, too much of cost will be there. But providing airbag in all five seats, uh, driver and uh, other passenger side, front seat, and all seats in the rear, seat belts in every seat, a whole lot of things. They think that this will increase the cost. Yes, some cost increase will be there, but that's that adds to the safety. But people are to be also changed. It is not only the vehicle. People still don't uh, go by. Uh, the safety features of the vehicle, they go by the look of it or cost of it or such thing, uh, rather than <laughs> looking into, I'm going to- Shahrukh Khan modeling for it. Star car only. Shahrukh it's Khan not modeling. that I'll go and buy a five-star car. No, it's nothing like that. That approach is not there. Sir, I want to know that uh, why not each and every car is tested in global NCAP before uh, getting into sales in the road? Like They are not interested. Government's policy is not there that everything has to be five star or star rated. It's not like that. Government doesn't have any, any such policy at the moment. And that's why they don't have to send it to global NCAP for testing.
course, testing should be developed in our own country only, and then only testing cost also will come down, and they will be encouraged to get it tested within the country and get it advertised that our car is four star, five star, and so on and so forth. So that, that some educated lot only now are interested in buying star rated car, five star car or four star car. Not not uh, many, not many. Very few people are depending on the star rating of the cars. Good, Dr. I have a question. Uh, maybe yeah. Yeah. Uh, so first and foremost, you mentioned that uh, black spot is the top priority of uh, government of India right now, and each and every state has been working hard to find out black, identify black spot, and then rectify it. The circular was circulated in the year 2015, so it is 2021. So some states are having huge number of black spots that have been already identified, and some are lagging behind with only 20 or 25. For example, uh, Haryana only have 26 black spots so far, while the neighboring state Punjab have around 295. So why there is not a pragmatic or a holistic approach that each and every state should be at the same level and the submission of the black spot uh, should be such uh, that it should coincide with the number of people, uh, fatal or number of accidents that are happening on the road. Second question is, ki as per IRC SP88, uh, the pre-opening uh, uh, phase needs to be audited before uh, the completion certificate or the opening certificate of the road is being provided and people could use it. So uh, the photos or the pictures that you were showing uh, have a number of problems like uh, the gantry board, uh, the poles of those gantry boards were not being uh, treated with reflective stickers or hazardous markings and everything. So why are these the roads uh, uh, been allowed to be operated in the first place be even before uh, the pre-bid uh, audit is uh, been done. So these are my two questions. Sorry, if you could elaborate. Thank you. Okay. Uh, in case of black spots, uh, these are uh, invited by the ministry or ministry's uh, TRW, Transport Research Wing. Uh, they publish this report and uh, they <coughs> They invite the states to give. Now, last time, first time it was done in 2015, uh, only 13 states and union territories gave them the data and they published, and that was uh, 789 black spots. 2019, again, uh, TRW asked everybody. Uh, based on previous three years data as per ministry's uh, kind of protocol for identifying black spots. Uh, uh, you know probably the definition of black spot. And based on that, they have identified 8,014 black spots in 2019. Uh, 16, 17, 18 uh, kind of data they took and three years data that gave. And in this list, only 18 states and union territories gave the data, not the remaining 18. Total 36 states and union territories are there. So therefore, only 18 gave and other 18 didn't give. So question is, again, seriousness is not there. Second thing, second thing, state like Bihar, uh, almost every day. I mean, it depends on the people who are at the helm of affairs. They try to identify uh, identify black spots every now and then. If there is an accident somewhere, they will call it black spot. And subsequently, somebody said that this doesn't qualify for uh, black spot. Then they said, okay, this is gray spot. <laughs> I mean, this is the kind of situation or Again, somebody said this, what is gray spot? Then they started renaming it as they said it is vulnerable spot. Now, all these terminologies has, have come. I mean, black spot, gray spot, vulnerable spots, and everybody is trying to correct that, rectify that. And as I said, something not very good being done that short-term measures, medium-term measures, long-term measures. No, no, no. There should not be short term, long term, medium term, etc. There should be one term and that should be collected because it has killed so many people, injured so many people. So therefore, that 
must not exist even for a short period. It should be immediately attacked. But question is, since these are being not corrected, uh, improved in a systematic way, following a scientific proper scientific method, uh, method, what is happening? And and other thing which what you mentioned that this is also linked that uh, pre-opening audit is done for every project. Now, what is done pre-opening audit? Uh, you probably know uh, that pre-opening audit is also something very strange. I mean, pre-opening audit is like a, a it's it's like sajay hue dulhan. Aapko samaj mein aata hai to. Everything, everything <laughs> is place. The crash barrier, the the signs, the markings, and everything must be correctly placed, and then reopening what it is to be done. And that is to identify if there is anything left out with any shortcoming with respect to speed breaker. Uh, sorry, the, the crash barrier in terms of science, marking, etc. But what happens? They will say that con contractor has completed 90% or 95% of his work. So can you come and do the pre-opening audit? What is pre-opening audit? He's yet to complete the work. 90% only or 95% have been completed. And when you go there, there is no science. There is no marking. Oh, it is being done. It is being done. Tomorrow it will start. So that's the kind of thing I have attended these problems hundreds of times, and we have seen uh, these things happening. And that's the problem of our system. We, we seem to take things as they come, not in a rigorous rule fashion. I mean, it has to be followed in a very strict regime of rules not in a loose structured uh, kind of thing, loosely structured kind of thing. And that's what is happening every time in the pre-opening audit and black spot treatment. What you are saying, what you said, and as I said, in the country, there is only, only uh, program of road safety is black spot program today. Nothing else is happening. Now, if pre-opening audit is not correct, that road within first one month will develop 10 black spots. So as we are correcting the black spot, behind that new black spots are being created every day through the construction and implementation of the roads which are being developed newly or upgraded. So all that are creating black spot and after that we are just trying to correct them and correct them again wrongly with a uh, with a with a kind of short term measures medium term measures long term measures which is not the correct way to do it so that's the situation at the moment and that's why road safety is not showing any sign of containment or not correction not showing any sign of correction in spite of all these things are happening because it is not a coordinated and strictly following guidelines and ruthlessly it has to be done if it is not attended ruthlessly and and in in passing okay okay uh, it will be okay so this is not okay uh, road safety cannot be taken as okay it has to be very strictly followed in every step and then only things will be realized correctly i would just like no, to i just have one uh, thing just... sorry i I just have one thing very interesting to say here. It's it is the client's responsibility to make sure that they would not open a facility unless all issues raised in the road safety audit have not been closed or addressed by valid reasons by whosoever uh, has has built it. Yeah, and 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 another very interesting thing is if you have a road system built for 20 to 30 years. You may be having a system or a road which could be tested by your son or your grandchild. Yeah, exactly. so you need to make sure. So you, you don't build a road for today. You build it for 30 years. You build it for 50 years. 
so mm. you so you, you a crash barrier kite be tested by your grandchild and he may become paralyzed for somebody else's fault done 50 years ago so yeah. so these things are very serious and you know it's it's just that we are too numb to all of these issues yes that's true. i would i would also like to add a little uh, bit to it uh, while just uh, talking about black spot the definition says it's a stretch of about 500 meters so that word mm -hmm. about is still not been interpreted correctly by many people because what people are doing they are taking just 500 meter of stretch and they are taking five accidents for the black spot uh, identification and an accident which has happened at 510th meter they are leaving it so even that small uh, nomenclature is not been followed by many people or many practitioners that are there that I have seen and witnessed. So all these things needs to be collaborated in a holistic manner so that uh, what we are aiming by 2025 20, or 2030 by reducing uh, the road deaths uh, by 50% could be attained only through a proper methodology and methodology that is being followed throughout in a very standardized manner. Thank you so much. Yes, that's right. I mean, uh, about 500 meter, it means that if it is a straight road, curved road, it could be about 500 meter. If it is a junction, it is probably 75 meter or 100 meter or even less, depending on what size is the junction. So it is not that every time it is to be 100, uh, 500 meter. It could be 510, as you said, that uh, there was a serious accident, life lost, and there is a valid reason. It is part of that particular 500 meter section. Now that, if you take this other 10 meter on the other side will be reduced, that's all. If you are very strict about 500 meter. So if you take this 10 meter, this 10 meter on the other side can be taken less, as simple as that. Or it can be even 510 or 520. Who says that there is a sacrosanct kind of 500 meter to call it a black spot, which would be 300 exactly. meter, it could be 20 meter, it could be 50 it meter. Could, it could go up to 700 meters if the accidents are repetitive, the accidents are repetitive. No, no, but question is you take another black spot there, adjacent exactly. black spot, I mean, there may be a gap in between of 100 meter and there is another one. Well, one exactly. is intersection and another one is a curve, short curve, that's all. So maybe a mid block, sir. Maybe a mid block is also showing a continuous accident. Maybe the fast speed uh, 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 vehicles are passing by. So I'm, my just my main purpose was to uh, bring about this topic so that uh, the definition of the black spot should be followed in the correct spirit throughout the country. Then only we will be able to find the correct black spot, correct number of black spots, and that would be rectified. Thank you so much, sir. Thanks. Yeah, definition is a small matter. The further matters which are of serious consequences, those are not uniformly followed. And that itself is a serious concern. Definition is, of course, one little issue, but even the subsequent things are also not uniformly followed at the moment. Do that. Do that. Okay, uh, I think uh, it's uh, time to end the session now. So thank you very much, sir, for your uh, time and and uh, like interactive session. Uh, I think that's very very helpful. And uh, please uh, share the slides with us so that we can share it with the um, candidates. Uh, dear participants, uh, we have now time for lunch. Uh, please try to join back by two twenty five, and uh, we shall start the session at two thirty. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir.